Hello, greetings. Let's take a look at our first example uh, from the production planning section, section 2.2.1 of the text. In this screencast, our goal will be to formulate our linear programming problem, and then additional videos will be made in which we solve it using LibreOffice Calc um, or Microsoft Excel uh, and MATLAB. But again, here we'll just formulate our linear programming problem, which in my opinion is the most important step because if you can't properly set up uh, the model or the problem to be solved, then solving it doesn't necessarily do you um, any good. All right, so production planning example. So already the first thought that comes in my uh, head is I'm going to, you know, my objective is going to be to maximize my profits. Okay, but let's read the problem and go from there. So three products, P1, P2, and P3, are manufactured on two machines, M1 and M2. Each of the products must be processed on both machines in arbitrary order. The unit profits of the products are $5, $3.50, and $4.50, respectively. And the machine capacities are 8 and 9 hours per planning period. The processing times of the three products on the two machines in minutes per quantity unit are shown in the table below. Okay, so in the table below... Oh, row 1 corresponds to machine 1, row 2, machine 2, and then we have the, um, what are the units again? The processing times of the three products in minutes. So um, the time required in minutes to make a single unit. Okay, and then we're told that each machine can operate for, machine 1 can operate for 8 hours and machine 2 can operate for 9 hours before they need to go down for maintenance. All right, so let's formulate a profit maximizing linear programming problem. All right, so again, if I think about my objective for my um, production planning problem, okay, so my objective is to maximize my profits. So in terms of calculating my profits, okay, my profits are going to be the sum over uh, the number of units made of each product times the profit per product. Okay, so in general, it's going to be I'm going to sum over all of my products, and it's going to be the number of products of each product times the profit uh, per product. Um, later on, we'll also have um, a penalty uh, that we'll add on to that function, but but for now that's what we have. So I'm going to write it as, you know, Z, okay, my profit is going to be the sum over all profits. And, you know, before I write that down too, let me make a note that we'll let one be the number um, of units of product one. X2 will be the number of units of product two. And X3 will be the number of units of P3. Okay, so Z then will be equal to okay, X1, the number of units of X1, times okay, the profits are five dollars, three fifty, and four fifty for each type of unit respectively. So this would be five X1 plus three point five times X2 plus 4.5 times x3. Okay. So remember the units of x1, x2, and x3 um, would be units, um, you know, you know, units made of each product type, and then five is you know dollars per units. Okay, the you know profit and dollars per uh, unit made of each type. So then z uh, will give us our profits in in dollars. Okay. All right. And so our goal is going to be to maximize that, okay? And next we need to think about constraints, okay? And so what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to go through the problem and write down our relevant equations, and then um, we'll, we'll write it as a more compact linear programming problem. All right, so if I look at, or reread the problem, okay? So we see we have this constraint that um, our machines, machine one can run for eight hours and machine two can run for nine hours. Okay. So 
if I, you know, come back to this table, okay, this is the amount of minutes, the number of minutes it takes to make a unit of product P1 on machine 1. Okay, so if I know that I'm making X1 units of um, product 1, X2 units of product 2, and X3 units of product 3, I can calculate the number of minutes um, it takes to make, you know, all of those units on machine 1 and 2. Okay, and then my constraint is going to be is that time needs to be less than or equal to the total uh, planning period for each machine. Okay, and um, you know I should add, you know this this line is is a little could be a little confusing at first, but um, we're making x1 units of you know um, product one, x2 units of product two, x3 units of product three. Okay, and those are going to be made on um, both machines um, at the same time. Okay, so there's not, you know, X1 units on machine 1. So there's, there's just one variable um, for number of units of product 1, one variable for number of units of um, product 2, and one variable for number of units of, of product 3. Okay, so to write this out then, okay, so if I first think about machine 1, Okay, so the total time required on machine one is going to be, we're going to sum over the number of units of each product made times the time required to make each unit. Okay, so machine one, I'll have three times X1. So this is the time in minutes to make a unit of X1. Here's the number of units of X1 plus... 5x2 plus 4x3. Okay, and then we'll come back to the constraint part in a second. In machine two, okay, I have so it's 613. 6x1 plus 1x2 plus 3x3, okay? All right, so this corresponds to the total time in minutes to make all of these units on machine one. This is the total time in minutes to make all of these units on machine two. Okay. Well, the total production period, or total you know time at which machine one can possibly operate is going to be um, eight hours, right? It's going to be eight hours. Okay. So this total time, okay, needs to be less than eight hours. Okay. Now, now I just need to be careful as this is a minutes. So I'm going to take my eight hours. Okay. And I'm going to multiply it by 60 minutes per hour. Okay. So the right hand side is the total, um, planning period in minutes for machine one. And the left hand side is the total time in minutes required to make, all three of those units. Okay. Then likewise, the second machine has a planning period of uh, nine hours. All right. So the right hand side would be nine times uh, sixty. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, can I think of any more constraints? Um, the only other you know thing that comes to mind, right, reading through the problem, is you know we're making units of product. Um, so it's not possible to make negative units of product. So X1, X2, and X3 are all going to have to be greater than or equal to zero. Okay. Now, I'll explicitly write this out. This is our non-negativity constraint. Um, you'll see, for example, in Solver, uh, there's a checks box. If you wanted to check it to you know, indicate that all variables are non-negative, um, but you can just as well write them out, and it's a little more general. Um, and you would need to do that for, say, um, MATLAB. So, you know, here's our constraints, our production time, and then, you know, our next one would be in terms of, you know, all of our units have to be, you can't have negative units, or you can't make negative units, um, and so I'm just going to try and line up my variables. We'll have x1 is greater than or equal to zero, um, x2 is going to be greater than or equal to zero, and x3 will be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, um, 
that's it. Okay, and you know, the last comment I'll make before you write it down as a compact equation um, is remember, you know, you could always bring this all the way over to the left hand side and make this constraint less than or equal to zero. Same thing here, so that all of your constraints are comparisons to zero. And then, you know, if you want to make, you know, all of your um, relational operators the same, all right, you could, you know, say for example here, uh, negative x1 would be less than or equal to zero, right? I could um, you add a sign change to flip um, the operator, okay? Um, but those are, you know, things we'll do, um, you know, when we need to, uh, or when they come up in, in terms of actually solving them. All right, so now in terms of, you know, writing this out compactly, okay, so we're going to maximize the objective function z is 5x1 plus 3.5x2 plus 4.5x3. Okay, and that'll be subject to the constraints. Okay, the first one was our production time requirement. So 3x1 plus 5x2 plus 4x3 uh, is equal to less than or equal to uh, 60 times 8. Um, so you could write that as you know 480 minutes. Ah. Okay. Our second is this one. So six X one. I'm going to write the one in there for X two. Um, should probably get rid of it to make it more compact but just keeping track of uh, coefficients. 3x3, uh, uh, must be 540. Bam, and then our non-negativity constraints. x1's greater than or equal to zero. x2 is greater than or equal to zero. And x3 is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, that's it. Uh, next, we'll go ahead and solve it um, in LibreOffice Calc um, uh, slash Microsoft Excel and MATLAB. Um, and there again, you know, you could change these constraints if you wanted to. So say if I um, bring 480 over to the left-hand side, I'll have a comparison to zero. I could do the same thing with 540. Um, then all my constraints would be compared to zero. You know, it's not necessary, especially not with Excel. And then again, just note that if you, you know, needed to change the um, relational operator, so if I wanted to make this a less than or equal to, so they're all the same, uh, I just need to multiply through by negative one um, to flip the operator. Okay, um, so Excel, this won't be necessary. Uh, MATLAB, we, we will need to try and standardize things uh, like that, at least our relational operators, but don't worry, we've got it. So, hope that helps. Um, next, we'll, we'll solve this guy together.